Hello everyone, uh, this is another video in our Phobos development series, and today we're going to be demonstrating how to use Phobos in combination with an Aka.NET cluster and Jaeger. Jaeger is a distributed tracing system that's open source, it was originally built by Uber, and today we're going to be showing you how to configure an actor system that uses Phobos to upload all of its trace data to Jaeger, and we'll see what that data looks like. If you want to follow along with the sample that I'm going to be using today to generate the data that we're going to look at on Jaeger, uh, you can actually go and clone the code sample from the Phobos samples repository on GitHub here. I will include a link to this down below in the description. Uh, you need to have a Phobos NuGet key in order to run this, so you can go ahead and request an evaluation using the other link we're going to show you at the end of this video. To launch Jaeger, we're going to use a built-in Docker container that the Jaeger project produces called their all-in-one container. This runs all three of the different pieces of infrastructure that Jaeger normally uses in production inside the same process. And it's really good for evaluating Jaeger really quickly. So if you're an organization that's looking to try out its first distributed tracing implementation, the Jaeger all-in-one uh, setup is a really easy way to go and evaluate it. So we're gonna go ahead and spin up one of these behind the scenes. And you'll notice that the all-in-one Docker container opens uh, a bunch of different ports. Here's the main ones we're going to pay attention to. First, the uh, port number uh, 6832. That's the default port that the Jaeger agent listens to, and that's where we upload spans by default usually. The next port, 16686, is the HTTP port we use for actually viewing uh, the Jaeger dashboard. That's where we can go and query all of the traces that our system is going to produce. What the last port is for on the screen is in the event that you don't want to use an agent for uploading spans to Jaeger, you can actually report spans directly to the Jaeger collector itself over HTTP. And we're going to show you how to configure either one of these options inside the phobos.tracing.jaeger NuGet package in just a moment. So by default, we recommend configuring phobos.tracing.jaeger to use the agent configuration. This is probably the best setting for production use just because the uh, agent architecture in Jaeger is quite scalable and works really well across a large number of processes. And that's something you can read a little bit more about in the literature that we're going to link to at the end of this video. But this is what the default configuration looks like in Phobos. So we have our normal sort of setup for the actor provider. Where we're going to use the Phobos cluster actor reference provider. Uh, this is what allows the instrumentation to get injected behind the scenes and all of your actors. And then in the phobos.tracing Hokon section, we specify the provider type is Jaeger. This is what allows us to load the Jaeger driver when we start. And we're going to tell the Jaeger driver to point at localhost and port 6832 for uploading spans over UDP. Now, if for whatever reason, let's say you have a, a small environment and you don't really think the uh, agent configuration for a Jaeger is necessary, and you just want to upload everything over HTTP to the Jaeger collector, which is uh, pretty similar to how Zipkin works under the hood, you can just specify the Jaeger.endpoint setting to be equal to this HTTP URL if you're using the all-in-one container that we set up. And that'll allow Jaeger to go and upload its spans over HTTP directly to the collector. And there's no need to set up or provision agents. This design is probably a little bit less scalable than using the agent-based one. But for small networks, it probably won't matter. All right, now with all this in mind, let's take a look at the data that actually gets produced by Akadot Cluster and Phobos and see how it looks inside a live running Jaeger instance. So if I pull up the Jaeger UI here and I take a look at services, I'll go ahead and see each one of the four nodes in my cluster, along with, ironically enough, the Jaeger dashboard shows up because Jaeger traces itself using Jaeger. So if I go ahead and query uh, localhost 2551 and click on find traces, I'll go ahead and see that we have a number of various trace operations here uh, that hit all four nodes. So I can see just by eyeballing it here that this trace, which starts with this use actor, has, let's see, 21 total operations in it, four that belong to node 2551, nine that belong to node 2552, and so forth. So let me go and drill in on this. So what Jaeger will show us here is a histogram of all the activity that's been recorded concurrently inside this cluster. So this node up here generates the initial request. So we can see this is an actor slash user slash A. And we can see some of the tags that we've used to go ahead and help identify this actor. So we can see, for instance, the actor implementation type 
uh, the actor message type and so forth. And if I scroll down, I can go ahead and see some log events that we recorded. So in this case, it looks like we recorded the uh, two string value of this message. Well, if I drill into the histogram, I can see that the first actor to receive a message uh, from this one was the slash user slash random actor on this node. And if I go and flesh out its tags, I can see here that the sender was indeed uh, the previous actor. And I can see some more log messages that were recorded automatically by Phobos. So this looks like a standard Akka.net logging message here that we appended. And then from there, it looks like, if I go ahead and I collapse down some of these tabs here, this actor on localhost 2552 sent a copy of the this ping message that's gonna propagate across the cluster. It sent two copies into dead letters, which is something that this sample's programmed to do to help demonstrate this feature. And then one copy of that message made it to this node, localhost 54091. So if we go and expand that, we can see that another copy of this message got pinged from this node back to localhost 2552, then back to 2551, then back to 2552 again. And you can go ahead and view all these bits of parallel activity that are happening as a result of the same original message, but in multiple places inside the cluster. So that's an example of the type of power that Jaeger can give us. It gives us the ability to really drill in to all of the details on what's happening inside our distributed systems. And it's very easy for us to go and actually visualize and see what each operation consisted of and what was its local context relative to the, the distributed operation as a whole. So I really like the user interface for Jaeger and I, I think it's very clean and very easy to work with. So I would highly encourage that you take it out for a spin and try it out for yourself and let us know what you think.